Hello, ma'am. We can start with. Hello, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. So this is regarding the scale validation, which is the last step uh, involved in the scale uh, development and validation. So I would uh, suggest all the scholars to go through this paper. I found this paper is really very, I mean, it's an excellent paper written by Rachna Shah and Sosa and Goldstein. So this is a paper which talks about the use of structural equation modeling, though it is in the operations management research, but the, you would find the quality is so good and it's a beautifully written paper. What, what you need to look into it is, I'll share with you, because we have also for this particular paper, which uh, was published in Decision Sciences, this is what we have followed also, you know, that's why I suggest that if you're going for the scale development and scale validation, you should always look into this process which is suggested, recommended by Shah and Goldstein. So one is the first is the pre-analysis stage, that is the conceptual issues. So according to them, what they have recommended is the indicators used to measure a latent variable, they are reflective in nature. So because we are talking about a scale, so initially they should be reflective in nature. Structural equation modeling is not applicable in case of exploratory research or where the theory is not well established. So because same when you talk about structuration modeling, so though because we start with the confirmatory factor analysis, sir, in this case, so they say it is not applicable where you are going for the exploratory type of research. So the present study, when I, uh, we have written present study, this is with regard to the decision science paper. So indicators used in this study, they are reflective in nature and the study is descriptive and evaluative. So we are not saying that it is an exploratory type of a research work which we are conducting here. With regard to the sample size also, they are saying the certain number of observations per parameter estimated and conducting the power analysis are the appropriate approaches for determining the adequacy of the sample size. According to the McCrim et al. 1996, if the degree of freedom are high, so in our case, degree of freedom was very high, 225, adequate powerful test of it can be carried out on models with moderate sample size because finally we were left with the sample of 173 only. The third degrees of freedom, though we have already discussed, so over identified model is highly desirable because more than one equation is used to estimate at least some of the parameters significantly enhancing the reliability and the estimate. So proposed model, in our case, proposed model for throughput orientation is an over-identified, that time it was an over-identified model with degree of freedom equal to 225. Measurement of model specification. So moderate, neither large nor small number of measured variables per latent variable is desirable as it compensates small sample and doesn't require more parameters to estimate which further need a large sample size for adequate power. So in our case, 13 measured variables for mindset, six for measurement and seven variables for methodology, they indicate moderate number of measures, measured variables per latent variable. So the ratio of sample size to measured variables arrived at seven ratio one. So because where the number was 173 and measured variables, they were 26. So finally, we were left with 13 items for mindset, six for measurement, and seven for methodology. Latent model specification, single indicator construct in SEM model is troublesome as it ignores measurement reliability and also poses model identification problem. So far as possible, the proposed model should be reflective in nature as non-reflective model requires additional restrictions for the model to be identified and for the interpretation of measure of variation accounted for in the endogenous variables. So there is no latent variable with single indicator in our case, and the study has used reflective model only. With regard to the data analysis stage, the data screening, screening of the data is required through exploratory data analysis, including missing data, influential outliers, and distributional characteristics. So in our case, so study used full information maximum likelihood estimate and as it as it leads to lowest rate of convergence failure least bias in parameter estimates and lowest inflation in the goodness of fit statistics type of the input matrix studies should determine whether a particular sem program provides correct estimation of a model fit to a correlation matrix covariance matrix was used and which also ensured the correct results Estimation method explicitly state the estimation method 
and link it to the properties of the observed variable. So we used MLE and which assumes that the input data are univariate and multivariate normal and requires that the input data matrix be positive definite. And then the post analysis, they, they, they have suggested that we should go for these many model fit indices. We should look for it. Measurement model fit also, we should go for the convergent validity and discriminant validity, which was thoroughly followed. Structural model fit also, we, we have performed the chi-square difference test also, sir, for the nested models. And for model specification, we have specified that the different alternative model, models they were sir, tested, not one single model, but alternative models they were tested. So now we'll look into the scale validation, sir. Sure, ma'am. That's a very wonderful and well-structured paper. Very wonderful. Uh, so, so this is the, I mean, uh, we have to ensure that, you know, this is how we have actually done it. Otherwise, uh, very difficult to find a home for your paper, sir. Very difficult. Not that easy to publish the paper on scale value. So this is the indices of measurement model in the structural model also. So in the model one, you can see that we ran 11 models. Sir. When I said, you know, alternative model, so we ran 11 model. Model one comprised of second order mark. Now, so in this case, we have also looked into the, because it is nomological validation. So we have looked into the moderation of market orientation also, sir, in this case. So we can start with the model two because we are talking about a particular scale only. So first order mindset, we looked into the first order mindset, sir, here. And you can see that almost uh, for most of the indices, you can see the values, they are within the threshold limit. Uh, mindset is... The table is not clear, ma'am. Can you please explain what these models are? Uh, model one. Okay, okay, okay sir. Yes, sir. So model one is market orientation is a moderating variable here, sir, because we are looking for a structural model fit also here. But otherwise, when, when a scholar is going for the scale validation only, so in that case, his step would confine to scale validation means confirmatory fact analysis only and the fitness of the measurement model, sir. So he is not looking beyond, but in our case, it was beyond uh, fitness of the measurement model because we had gone for the, uh, for basically we had three dimensions of throughput orientation, that is mindset measurement and methodology. Beside these three, we also had with us the market orientation scale also because we had looked for the moderation of market orientation. So now in from these parameters, you can see that chi-square, CMNI, oblique degree of freedom. So a threshold limit is that it should be below below five, idly below three, but they say that if, even if it is below five, so that is good enough. With regard to GFI, goodness of fit index, with regard to CFI, comparative fit index, with regard to NFI, norm fit index, with regard to TLI, Tucker, Levis index, so these are the goodness of fit indices, so these values should be above 0 0.90. Then only we can consider that our model is fit. And then the these are two uh, poor fit indices. They are RMR and the RAMZI. And the value in case of RMR should be below 0 0.50. In case of RAMZI, it is good that if you have a value below 0 0.08. So we had looked for the fitness of each construct. So the market orientation, we can see that almost, you know, we have the that model was fit. So the data which we have obtained and what we are proposing, so there is a proper fit between the boats. Model two, we had looked into the, so do you have a question? Uh, no ma'am, please continue. Okay. So, okay, my model two, we had looked into the fitness of one dimension of, you know, throughput orientation, which is mindset. So separately, this is a first order mindset uh, model, which we had looked into. And then we could, we can see that GFI, CFI, NFI, TLI, all are above 0 0.90. Remzia is point below 0 0.08. So this is also a, I mean, it's a better fit model. With regard to the measurement model also, you can see, except for Remzia, which is slightly above 0 0.08. It is above 0.0, it's 0 0.09, but still, more or less, you know, if we are measuring the fitness of the model based on these seven or eight criteria, even if they fulfill the or they reach up to the threshold limit, even with regard to four or five indices, so it is good enough. So, but Ramsia is slightly above 0 0.08. With regard to the methodology model, because initially, so what we do we, we did is we went for the CFA for each dimension. Confirmatory factor model for each dimension, that is mindset, measurement, and methodology. That is model two, model three, and model 
four. In case of model four, the Ramsey is, uh, I mean, you can say it is about point, though above point zero eight, but still it is fine in our case. Model five, this is because uh, we looked for the moderation of market orientation between throughput orientation and the business performance. So business performance is the dependent variable in this case. And we had looked for the moderation of market orientation. We had gone for the second order business performance model also. Second order, why? Because we had kept the items related to the objective measures and the subjective measures only. So that's why we had gone for second order business, uh, this business performance model. So the all the values, they fall within the threshold limit. Model six, three M's correlated. So, so what we have done is we have correlated mindset, measurement, and methodology. Now, because we have already done this exercise in SPSS, we had already looked into the correlation matrix also. So, and the values, they were good. So we had gone for, so now what we are assuming here is that all the three dimensions, they are related to each other, they are significantly related to each other. So we have drawn those covariances. We have drawn the covariances among these three dimensions. And you can see the this is actually the, the best fit model, model six. Thank because you. all the values, except for you can say GFI, but now because you know with 26 items, you can very well imagine that you know uh, GFI <laughs> has not reached uh, even uh, up to 0 0.90, but still fine, this is closer to 0 0.90. Model seven, three M's orthogonal models. Sir. So orthogonal, though we are assuming that they are related to each other, but they, you know, they belong to a particular construct. So some, some degree of independence is also there, but not high degree of correlation, but some degree of independence is also there. So in that case, we can say, so uh, finally we concluded looking into the model six and the model seven results that uh, the throughput orientation, which comprises of these three dimensions, they are significantly related to each other because orthogonal model is not better than the correlated model. Correlated model is better than the orthogonal model because you can look into the value of NFI, TLI, and particularly the Ramsey, you can see that it is above 0 0.08. Then we look for the look for the so first order TO model, also throughput orientation model. First order, first order means where we have not frozen those uh, items under three dimensions. All the items they were kept free, and so this model is also not so good model as compared to the correlated model. Right. Model nine, we had looked into the correlated structural model. So this is now the correlated structural model because uh, uh, up till model eight, they, they, these were the measurement models only. So then we looked into the correlated structural model, which is better than the orthogonal structural model. So both with regard to the measurement model, as well as with regard to the structural model, we found that correlated, uh, when we are correlating these three constructs, so that, that model turns out to be the better fit model. And model 11 is the proposed model. So, I mean, the, the proposed model means that what we actually initially proposed, so not so good, but uh, we found that model six, when we compare all the measurement models and model nine, when we compared the two structural models. So model nine was the best among model nine and 10, that was the better. And among all the eight models, we have seen that, you know, the sixth model was the best fit model where we have considered these three dimensions to be significantly related to each other. So we found that, you know, there is a great degree of uh, correlation. So this is a discriminant validity. And we can see, sir, that, you know, the relationship between mindset and measurement Though it is a squared value, but it is uh, a 0.587, which is which shows that degree of correlation. Mindset and methodology 0.542. Measurement and methodology is 0.571. So from here also we can see that you know the three dimensions of throughput orientation they are significantly they are significantly related to each other. So this is the correlation table, mean standard deviation correlation table. So this was for the moderations. Sir. Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll share one that model of the, do we have time? Just give me one minute, sir. I'll show the model. So, so I'll share the model with you. Uh, let me check the model here. Because uh, you can see that, you know, when I say that the correlated 
dimensions of throughput orientation and their impact on the business performance. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. So, so this was the model. And uh, you can see that, you know, when I say that the correlated, so we have drawn the covariances sir, between these mindset, measurement and methodology. So we have shown the covariances. So these are three correlated dimensions of throughput orientation leading to the throughput orientation. This was the model, which was the best fit model in our case, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I think uh, we can stop here, ma'am, and we'll continue yes, from sir. here in the next video then. Right, right, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, ma'am.